one. Welcome everyone to another episode of Just Among Friends. I'm Lori Hines. I'm the co-host of this Zoom show and um, I'm um, joined by other co-hosts, Mike Isley with Texans for Israel and Ann Stacy with Texans for a Safe Israel. I want to um, do a quick announcement before we get started with today's speaker. So let me do a quick screen share to share with you upcoming speakers. Bear with me one second. Okay. Some upcoming speakers after today. Next week, we're gonna be hearing from Ruth Isaac from the Shema Institute. She is the co-founder of the Shema Institute and head of the EU relations at the Jewish Association out of uh, Belgium, followed by Rabbi Tuli Wise, the founder and director of Israel 365. He's gonna be joining us live from Israel on August 29th. And then followed by Laurie Cardoza Moore, the president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. Um, so we're excited about the upcoming speakers. However, we're very excited about today's speaker, who is Charles Pullman. He's a speaker, an attorney in Dallas, and he's going to be speaking to us today um, on a topic called A Changing Landscape, Israel and Abroad. Here at Just Among Friends, our mission is and always will be just to cultivate hearts to align with uh, the Jewish people and the land of Israel through bringing on a host of uh, speakers who speak on a variety of topics. And uh, we um, stick to our mission and this is so um, good to have Charles with us today. Welcome, Charles. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be here uh, on this uh, Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening depending upon where in the world you might be. Um, the topic I want to talk about tonight, today is uh, a changing landscape, Israel and abroad. Okay. There's a lot happening today. Yes, yes. Before you get started, though, I want to introduce, I'm going to give people just a oh, snippet all right. of, will, of your bio, please. <laughs> I, I thought that was my cue to get started, so I will wait. <laughs> That was a bad cue. I'm so sorry. All just, right, go ahead, Laurie. I, I promise, Charles, I would not take a lot of time, but I have to take a little second here to tell you guys, who, in case you don't know who Charles is, I mean, his bio, his un, his his bio related to today, today's presentation is a page and a half long, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. Just know that Charles Pullman, he is a, um, a Dallas attorney. He's a pro-Israel advocate. He is an American Jew. He and his wife Janine, um, his wife Janine, ha they have been to Israel over 50 times. He's even spent time living in Israel. And um, specific to today's uh, topic, he was part of the legislation that was passed in 2017, um, the anti BDS legislation that was introduced in Texas and passed in 2017. Um, for, um, for Texas to be part of that. So in fact, I have to start there. Uh, this is how I met you, Charles. Remember in 2017, uh, we all went to the Capitol. I didn't even know you then. We, we met at the Capitol in 2017, the day that they signed this into, into law, this legislation. So I wanna do a quick screen share and show our viewers um, the first time I met you. So bear with me, let me do that. Uh, okay. Here we go. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Here is the picture of the day I met Charles Pullman in Austin, Texas. This was a group of Texans that stood with Israel in the state capitol. There's Charles holding the flag in the very front, and there I am in the behind the flag in the white jacket. <laughs> and I'll never forget that day. Uh, you were there, and you were passing out little lapel pins of the Texas flag and the Israel flag, and I still have that lapel pin. <laughs> that was a great day. That was a great day. Um, so before you start in on to that, today's topic, I just have to acknowledge uh, some people that just showed up. Welcome to all our friends. Uh, Pastor Swaggerty, it's such a joy to have you joining us again. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> um, okay, Charles, please tell us, yes, you are going to speak today 
on the topic of um, a changing landscape, Israel and abroad. So please tell us, give us some background on, on your topic today. Thank you, Lori. And then uh, hello again to everybody and to those that have just joined us. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a uh, passion of mine on this topic. And it's a real honor for me to uh, discuss this topic with you. Let me tell you what I plan to do in the time that we have today uh, in terms of an agenda. I think that in order to, be to better understand what is going on today with regard to Israel and the Middle East and the United States as its relationships with Israel, that we have a common understanding of some facts. So I wanna give an overview of some uh, historical facts that I think are relevant to help us understand the rest of the discussion that we're gonna have today in that connection. And then I wanna talk about the challenges that Israel is facing, positive developments, that are also happening with regard to Israel and the, the Middle East. I then wanna talk about what is now very current, which is the Ben and Jerry's statement uh, with regard to the sale of his ice cream in Israel and in uh, Judea and Samaria, and talk about BDS and the implications of the, the uh, Ben and Jerry's action with regard to BDS. And then at the end, we can have a question and maybe an answer if I know the answer to your questions. I just want to mention that as Lori, um, I lived in Israel in 71 on a kibbutz. I have more family in Israel than I do here. Uh, been there many, many times, over 50. Uh, I don't know the exact number because they stopped stamping our passports and they just give us little visa cards. And I've had the opportunity and been fortunate to uh, meet with prime ministers, members of the uh, military. Janine and I spent time on the Gaza border. Last year, we were on the Lebanese border. And it's a topic that is near to me. It's dear to me. It's part of me. And it's one that I follow. So let's talk about some historical facts. OK. The Jewish people are indigenous to Judea and Samaria. They didn't just show up or passing by. Several years ago, Janine and I went to a mosque here in Dallas where the founder of Students for Justice in Palestine spoke in which he said lots of things that I've read, but now I heard it firsthand. He said the Jews are just passerbys in, in, in Palestine and that they have no connection to Jerusalem or to the old city or to the Temple Mount. But in fact, the Jews are indigenous and the Jewish people are indigenous. And in not only you can read the Bible to know that, but just from a historical point of view and with all of the excavations. If you ask about the Palestinians and the pro-Palestinians, they will say the Jews have no connection with that land. Judea and Samaria was the name of that land. It was changed to, Palest to Syria, Palestinia by the Romans after the Bar Kokhba revolution in about 150 AD. Zionism began as a movement of the Jewish people in the late 1800s. It was as a result of the anti-Semitism and the pogroms that were growing in Europe against the Jewish people. Um, and it was a, a movement to restore the, the uh, Jewish homeland for the Jewish people. The, the legitimacy of Israel today, in, of modern Israel, really begins with the Balfour Declaration in, 20, in uh, 1917. It was adopted by the League of Nations in 1922 at the San Remo Conference. It was then created the, the British mandate that England had to uh, facilitate the establishment of a Jewish homeland in what then became known as Palestine, which at that time was what we call today Jordan, what is commonly called the West Bank, what is known as Israel, and also Gaza. But then in 1922, England split off, basically awarded what is now Jordan, but they called it then Transjordan to the Hashemite family. Uh, there's a lot of political uh, reasons for that. 
And what left from the original British mandate is a, mandate is a Jewish homeland was essentially 22% of what was originally part of the uh, uh, League of Nations resolution that was passed that was a legally binding obligation that was then assumed and ratified by the UN when it was established after World War II. The point of my make, making this is that there is no occupation by Israel of what is called the West Bank, because the West Bank, frankly, was never a entity. It was never a legal uh, uh, entity. There was never a Palestinian people, but it, it was first by the Ottoman Empire. Well, not first, but beginning uh, in about the, the 1500s, it was controlled by the Ottoman Empire, all of the Middle East. Then at the end of World War I, uh, the, the uh, Ottoman Empire was dissolved and its lands were divided. And then it became under the control of the British mandate. And then in the 48 war uh, with Israel's independence, Jordan captured the West Bank and annexed it, which was only recognized by two countries, which was Pakistan and England. And then in 1967, in the Six Day War, Israel captured the West Bank, which was part of Jordan. And Israel has never annexed the West Bank. I make this point because today in the media, whether it's the print or the TV or in the politicians that we hear speaking, uh, it's referred to as the occupied territory. It is not occupied because it was never a legally constituted area of, of land. It is disputed as to who should have control over it, but it is not occupied. And this will become more relevant in the talk today as we uh, talk about BDS. Despite the fact that this is the Jewish homeland, there have been multiple attempts to partition the, this land of Judea, Samaria, and Israel, or the West Bank and Israel, between Israel and the Arabs, beginning in 37, then in 47, 67 in Oslo that was in 1993 with Clinton, then with the uh, Clinton uh, uh, plan that, that began in 2000, and then continuing with Omar and Omer, who was a prime minister, and then with Trump's plan that was adopted during the towards the end of his presidency. In each case in which the a partition plan was proposed, it was rejected by the Arabs, by the Palestinians. And even in 1937, it was accepted by the uh, Jewish community that lived in, uh, in that part of the world, but it was, it was rejected by the Arabs. There have been multiple wars that have been fought between Israel and its neighbors in 47 and in 67 and in 73, 82 mm -hmm. with Lebanon. <clears throat> Uh, 06 with Lebanon, which I was in Israel in 06 during the war. I was in Haifa. I was in northern Israel. I was in Haifa when the sirens would go off because rockets were coming in from Lebanon and there was no Iron Dome at the time. Wow. And the, and the multiple wars with uh, Hamas in Gaza in 08 and in 2012 and in 2014 and in just this past May. It has been a constant attempt by the Palestinians, or really by the Arabs nations, historically, with the beginning of Zionism in the late 1800s, to deny the Jewish people their homeland and to stand in the way of doing it with, and not to recognize Israel as the Jewish state. Part of the changing landscape we're going to talk about is that that's changing. Mm. And we'll talk about that momentarily. Today, from a population of Israel that was in 1947, there was about 600,000. It's now over 9 million. Wow. It is incredible. Wow. How Israel has grown and prospered in really 73 years. Right. And over 20% of the Israeli citizenship is Arab. It's not Palestinian. It is Arab. They are Arab citizens that serve 
in the government. They serve on the Supreme Court. They serve in the hospitals. Uh, they even now, in some cases, are serving in the army. But I was told personally by an Israeli Arab that they have a problem in serving in the army because they don't want to be at war with fellow Arabs. Mm. I say that because many times today we hear <clears throat> the, a statement, even coming out of members of our own Congress, <clears throat> that Israel is an apartheid state committing genocide against the Palestinian people. It is not true. It is not true. In fact, what is happening is, is that there are lies coming out and being promoted and as part of the propaganda war against Israel that is embedded in BDS, which is what we're gonna talk about shortly. There are many challenges, obviously, that Israel faces. There's Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist organization recognized as such by the U.S. It controls Gaza since, nine, since uh, 2007. And its, it, it's a covenant, not charter, covenant, in the biblical sense covenant, clearly and, and, and uh, calls for the destruction of Israel not for the improvement of the Palestinian lives, not for the building of churches or, or mosques or roads, but for the destruction of Israel. There is the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, which still exists, even though now the governing body is what's called the, the Palestinian Authority, whose uh, governance is in the West Bank. It is, it, the PLO was brought to the West Bank by Israel uh, in the 1993 as part of the Oslo Accords, to, whose intention of the Oslo Accords was to result in the creation of a Palestinian state by 1999, from 93 to 99. And it divided up the West Bank in the areas A, B, and C, which we don't have time to go into. Right. But there are, but all of the Palestinian all of the cities in the West Bank that have a Palestinian population are governed by the Palestinian Authority. Um, there is Hezbollah, which is another terrorist organization that was formed in, 1990, in 1988. It is in Lebanon. It is, it is at war with Israel. And it is now firing rockets against Israel just this week. When uh, Janine and I were in Israel one time in 2014 on the Gaza border, we met with security people and military people. And we were told in 2014 that Israel is preparing for a three front war simultaneous on the Gaza border, on the Lebanese border in the north and on the Syrian border. Mm. All right, in May of this year, we saw the war between Israel and Hamas. It won't be the last. And although we don't have time to discuss it today, it was a different type of war because Israel used AI. Mm. No soldier, no Israeli soldiers went into Gaza. Wow. Israel used AI in order to bring that war to a stop. Wow. And even though it is a tragedy that any human life is taken as a result of war, the number of casualties in Gaza during this last war was less than ever before. Wow. Israel sustains terrorist attacks out of Gaza and out of Lebanon and its rockets. And it, there's just a whole slew. And it, even now with the uh, uh, balloons that are fire balloons. And every time that the Palestinian terrorists come up with a new tactic to attack Israelis, Israel responds with a means of stopping it, including the tunnels that, that Hamas built from Gaza into Israel, that in 2014, Janine and I had military clearance to go down into a tunnel. Wow. It was unbelievable. The tunnel is uh, uh, lined in reinforced concrete and it extended from Gaza into Israel and Israel discovered over 30 tunnels. Israel now has built a wall and sunk it down into the ground and the tunnels of, are of no use. Wow. However, and reported this week, by an organization in the northern part of Israel called the Alma Center, which Janine uh, and I are supportive of, and we know the uh, director. They have discovered that Hezbollah has been building tunnels in Lebanon and from Lebanon into Israel. 
and in the 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 so there's another means that the Hezbollah intends to use to attack Israel. As I mentioned before, there's a propaganda campaign that is growing against Israel to demonize Israel. Yes. And it, it claims that Israel is committing genocide and that it's an apartheid state. If Israel is committing genocide against the Palestinian people, which it's not, then it's doing a very poor job because right. the Palestinian population is growing. Right. And within the state of Israel, as I mentioned, the Israeli Arabs are a part of Israel. Now, Israel does have a problem that did become manifest again from 2000 in May of this year during the war with Hamas, where there is a radical element of Israeli Arabs that engaged in rioting mm. in Israel. And Israel has a internal problem of a part of the Israeli Arab population who have, who uh, who are rioting, and they will have to work out a way. However, it is interesting that in this new government of Israel that came into status within the last month, one of the members of this new government coalition is an Islamist, is an Israeli Islamist party. It's an Arab party that yeah. is now part of the government of Israel as well as this new new governing coalition is uh, made up of uh, parties on the left, on the right, in the middle of women, of uh, gays, gay parties. It's a whole spectrum. Hopefully right. this, this uh, governing coalition will last. There's a, Israel is facing what is called uh, intersectionality where we see it here in the United States where groups that claim that they are oppressed now believe that every oppressed group in the world has, has a common uh, relationship. And we can see that most clearly if you read the, the uh, Black Lives Matter charter, mm. which is at m4bl.com, it, it's charter. What? Hold on. Okay. It's at m4bl.org. Yes. Sorry. It's m 4 b That's my wife who always stands to correct me when I'm. <laughs> it's at m4bl.org. It is the Black Lives Matter charter. And part of that charter openly calls for the destruction of Israel. Now, what does the existence of Israel have to do with improving black lives? I don't know. Nothing. But it is part of it. The other challenge that Israel faces today is Iran and the JCPOA that was adopted by Mr. Obama that Mr. Uh, that our current president uh, wants to reestablish, but apparently is having some problems from Iran. We are witnessing today, as we sit here today, the collapse of Lebanon. And Hezbollah is starting to gain influence and power in Lebanon. Yes. And as I mentioned this week, it's starting to increase it, the number of rockets that it's firing into Israel. We see the involvement of Russia now in Syria. There's BDS that we'll talk about. And unfortunately, and of great concern, is an increase not only in the world, but in the United States of anti-Semitism. Mm. There are areas of the United States in New York and in California and in other cities where there's a heavy Jewish population where Jews are being attacked on the street. Okay, that's when right. When I was in Paris in 2016 with the Jewish agency, which is a quasi-government Israeli agency, we were told in downtown Paris that, if you, that when you go outside, don't carry, say, or do anything that, that, that could indicate you're Jewish because you could be attacked and the attacks are coming from the Muslim community. Mm. I never believed in 2016 that it could occur here in the United States, but it is. Mm. It is of great concern. It is of great concern to the Jewish community here in the States because it appears that anti-Semitism is becoming mainstream. Mm. And of even greater concern is that a substantial amount of the anti-Semitism and the rhetoric is coming out of members of our own Congress. 
Those members include, um, I, a member na named Talib and um, AOC, Corey Bush, Andre Carson, Mark Pocan, Ayana Presley, and Betty McCullough. In my opinion, those individuals spend more time condemning Israel and castigating and trying to defame Israel than they do attending to the matters of our own country. Just this week, those individuals signed a letter calling upon the IRS to investigate organizations that may be that charitable organizations who they claim are funding the illegal Jewish settlements, Jewish communities in the West Bank, and that the IRS should start to investigate. Frankly, that scares me a lot, that members of Congress are are calling upon a U.S. agency to target individuals. Yes. If that had occurred under the Trump administration, Congress would have called for an immediate impeachment. That's right. Here it is. These members of Congress are calling for it. And as far as I know, there's been no pushback by, and they're all Democrats, Has there's been no, no statement by any other member of the Democratic Party, much less Ms. Pelosi, condemning such a statement and calling upon the U.S. Right. IRS right. to just investigate and target. So, 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 so why, is, why is that? Forgive me for interrupting, but, you know, in your opinion, why are we not hearing from Pelosi and other people pushing back against this horrific anti-Semitic narrative coming out of Congress? Well, I will tell you that I was at a fundraiser for Congressman Van Taylor a couple of months ago, who's a Republican member of Congress from Collin County. I asked him why Congress had not passed a resolution condemning anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is not your normal bigotry. It has a long history, long, long history, and it is different than other types of bigotry. Congress, and I was referring, for example, that when we saw recently the attacks upon Asian Americans, Congress spoke out. When there's attacks on the Muslim community, Congress speaks out. I asked Congressman Van Taylor why Congress isn't speaking out about the anti-Semitism against the Jewish community. And his answer to me was, Congress is selective on who they speak out against. Now, he wasn't speaking for himself. He was speaking about Congress as a whole. Yeah. The concern I will tell you in the Jewish community today is that, man, is that anti Semitism is becoming acceptable and mainstream. Yes. I will tell you that there are members of the Jewish community today who think they need to consider moving to Israel. It is a very difficult time. The Jewish community in the United States is looking to other Americans and to our governments to speak out about anti-Semitism because as we've learned throughout history, what starts with the Jews doesn't end with the Jews. Right. So those are the challenges that we face. But let me talk about the positive things okay. as it regards Israel. Israel signed a peace treaty with Egypt in 1979 and it's held. It signed a peace treaty with Jordan in 95 and it's held. There were the Oslo Accords in 1993, which unfortunately have failed, uh, but it was an attempt to bring peace and create a two-state solution that everyone talks about, but it is probably today and in the near future unattainable. Israel withdrew from Lebanon that it had invaded in 1982 to stop the terrorists attacks and the rocket attacks from Lebanon into northern Israel. Israel withdrew in the year 2000. Unfortunately, Hezbollah then took up residence and Israel's received rockets since. Israel withdrew from Gaza in 05. Both the withdrawal from Lebanon and the withdrawal from Gaza were unilateral. It was not a mutually arranged action between Israel and the, uh, Hezbollah or, or Hamas. Israel just withdrew. And what has Israel gotten from Gaza since? Wars. But those were all attempts that Israel has made to bring peace 
and quiet to that region. More recently, in the last year, we have seen a major development called the Abraham Accords, mm. where Sunni countries, Arab countries, who previously did not have at least public, publicly acknowledged relations with Israel, are now forming relations with Israel and normalization of relations. And that includes the UAE and Bahrain and Sudan and Morocco. Mm. And that train really got accelerated in the last year of the Trump presidency. It was anticipated at the end of the year 2000 and the, that that train would continue in other uh, Muslim or Arab countries, because they're not the same, would also uh, join. Uh, but apparently that train has slowed down a little bit mm. and you can only guess why. Yes. Um, interestingly, Janine and I were supposed to go to the UAE uh, with the Israeli, uh, with this uh, Jewish agency that I mentioned as part of Israel in October, but the trip now has been canceled uh, because of COVID. Mm. Um, there's the new government coalition in Israel. As a result of that coalition, they're starting to see some improvements, both in their, hopefully their uh, relations with the United States, because Mr. Trump and uh, Mr. Obama didn't get along too well, as you know. Uh -huh, we knew. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. Israel, uh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Prime Minister Netanyahu. And Obama. And Obama didn't get along too well. Uh, and also relations between the EU. So I would offer to you that when Ms. Isaac speaks as your next speaker, you ask her what are the current relations between the EU and Israel? Because in the past, they've been pretense and the yeah. eu funds ngos whose purpose is to attack israel i don't mean physically but as part of propaganda right. israel comes out with in innovations all the time in fact now israel uh, israeli companies are operating throughout the world and in some of the arab countries to produce water from air and and Israel just has innovations that come all the time. Israel's nice. engaging in joint military exercises with countries throughout the world. It is increasing its relationships with Saudi Arabia and other Sunni countries, including Jordan. But unfortunately, and factually, in the Middle East, nothing stays the same for long. Uh. And what you, you think may be occurring either won't occur or what you never thought could occur would occur, just mm -hmm. like with, with the uh, uh, Abraham Accords. Everyone was ecstatic when they were announced. We hope that they will hold, uh, but things in the Middle East are very fluid. Yes. So all that leads me now to a discussion of the Ben and Jerry's action. Right. Let me, right. Ben and Jerry's adopted a statement in July 19 last month, saying that it was inconsistent with their values to sell their product in the occupied Palestinian territory. So we're talking about ice cream, selling ice cream in Israel, specifically in a specific area, right? We're talking Ben and Jerry's sells ice cream. Ben and Jerry's was founded by two Jewish men. It sold, they sold their interest to Unilever in about 20 years ago. Uh, but before, so Ben and Jerry's statement said that they were going to cease selling ice cream in the, in the occupied Palestinian territory. I'm going to leave that term there for a moment and come back. It, they also said that they were ending their decades long license agreement with an Israeli who produces Ben and Jerry's ice cream in, in Israel, they weren't going to renew the license and that they would develop a new relationship. Well, nothing has been said since. So when Ben and Jerry's made that announcement, it immediately triggered a opposition and a call upon states that have adopted anti-BDS legislation or laws to proceed under their laws because of the action taken by Ben and Jerry's. 
So what I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time just reviewing with you what is BDS and what are those laws? Yes. BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, directed against one country in the world, Israel. No other country. No matter what the atrocities are committed by any other country, whether it be China with its Muslim population, who just one country, Israel. The stated goals of BDS, which is a Palestinian... Uh, directed movement. It began in 2001 in Durban, South Africa. It began to take a more acceleration in 05. At the beginning, I could hardly remember what BDS stood for. Now it's as common and it's, and it's growing on campuses and in businesses. And what BDS's goals, their stated goals are, not what you may hear them say in English. What their stated goals are is end the occupation, end apartheid, and the refugees' right of return. Now, further, it says, one, <clears throat> Israel must end the occupation and colonialization of all Arab lands and dismantle the wall. What's important in that statement is that it says all Arab land. It doesn't say the West Bank. It doesn't say Gaza. It doesn't say East Jerusalem. It doesn't say Judea and Samaria. It says all Arab land. Two, it says that Israel must recognize the fundamental rights of all Arab Palestinian citizens of Israel to full equality. The Israeli Arab citizens of Israel have full equality. Are there areas of improvement? Of course, we have that same issue here in the US. Right. But the Israeli Arabs can vote in all elections. They have their own party. They serve in the Knesset or the parliament. They're now in the government. Um, and they have equal rights. And they're not Palestinian citizens. They're Arab citizens. Then three, respecting, protecting, and promoting the rights of Palestinian refugees to return to their homes and properties. Mm. Meaning that the Palestinian refugees refugees from 1948 can go back into Israel and take back their homes and, and what they claim to be their homes. The result of all of this is the, the destruction of the state of Israel. That's their main goal. No, that's, that is their goal. That's their goal. They, there is nothing in the BDS about improving lives of Palestinians living in the West Bank about bringing more jobs to them, which now they have jobs in the West Bank in Israeli owned companies, about build, building hospitals. BDS is not about improving the lives of Palestinians. It's about the destruction of Israel. <clears throat> For example, Omar Barghouti, who is a founder of BDS, said, has, is quoted as saying, we oppose a Jewish state. Other leaders of the BDS movement have been quoted as saying, bringing down Israel really will benefit everyone in the world. BDS does mean the end of the Jewish state. Israeli Jews are colonial settlers, colonizers are not entitled to self-determination. And the real aim of BDS is to bring down the state of Israel. This is from their own mouths. And if you need verification of that, the next time there's a Palestinian rally in Dallas, which there was one in May that I went to, it was on the grassy knoll in downtown Dallas where Kennedy was assassinated. And there were well over, in my estimation, 2,000 people, mostly Palestinian, chanting from the river to the sea, free Palestine. The river to the sea means the Jordan River to the Mediterranean. Yes. That means no Israel. That is the goal of BDS, is to defame, delegitimize, and destroy Israel as a Jewish state. BDS is engaged, I 
I'm sorry to say, in a genocidal campaign, that is the definition of genocide. It is. Is the destruction of a state and its people. Wow. And we have to call it out for what it is. That's right. They also claim that Israel's an apartheid state. As I mentioned, Israel, I mean, that's a definition that they, they have defined it in their own way. It's not the, the, the definition of apartheid in South Africa. Uh, for all the reasons about serving in the government and in the, in the parliament, being in the diplomatic corps and now being part of the government. It, it's just lies that are being spread by the Palestinian promoters who are seeking to destroy Israel and its propaganda. And it is being adopted by the mainstream media that is feeding into the growing anti-Semitism and anti-Israeliism that we are seeing today. This brings me to, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just was going to say, this brings me to my next question with this. Um, so what are the implications to this growing movement of BDS and the rise in anti-Semitism? Is it just about Israel? Well, yes, it's, it's, it's about Israel. But the Jewish... Jews worldwide are also the target of this growing anti-Semitism. Uh, right. But this is only about Jews and Israel. Right. But what I'm, I guess my question, let me reframe it. It's not, it's starting with Judea, this Ben and Jerry's latest episode of uh, anti-Semitism is targeting Judea and Samaria are also known as the West Bank but the implications are far greater than just Judea and Samaria is what I would, is what I'm understanding because it, it's leading to anti-Semitism to, you know, rises in that, which like you said, are targeting Jews across the world, not just in Judea and Samaria. Is that right? It is a, uh, it is part of the BDS. Now with that, let me, let me share with you what BD, what Ben and Jerry said on July 19th. We okay. believe it is inconsistent with our values for Ben and Jerry's ice cream to be sold in the occupied Palestinian territories. So I did a little bit of research. Hmm. What are Ben and Jerry's values? And I have written an essay that was published by the Texas Jewish Post that Lori has. And if you want it, you can contact her, you can contact me and I'll email it to you. Ben and Jerry's stated values on their website are human rights and dignity, social and economic justice, voting rights and democracy, criminal justice reform, and LGBTQ plus rights. In my research, I read and examined publications issued by a plethora of human rights organizations, including the State Department. And I will tell you, I can't go, I don't have time to go through it, that the Palestinian ruled areas fail each one of these values. So I started thinking about this. BDS issues a statement saying it's inconsistent with their values to sell ice cream in the Palestinian, in the occupied Palestinian territory. Okay, that is, BD, that is BDS. It is targeting Jews and Israeli businesses not to do business with them. <coughs> so what does that mean? Mm. And Jerry's is supporting BDS. If BDS's goal is the destruction of Israel, what do you end up with? You end up with a Palestinian state. That's right. When you look at what's occurring in the lives of the Palestinians in Palestinian ruled areas, they don't, they're not living under conditions to meet any of the, of the Ben and Jerry values. Ben and Jerry's is just bigoted. They're not seeking to improve the lives of Palestinians. They're seeking to defame and delegitimize and join the BDS movement. And, and the chairman of the board, a woman named Mital, has a long history of anti-Israel activity. Mm. And even though she said she's not anti-Semitic, 
if your goal is the destruction of the nation state of the Jewish people, and that's the only state in the world you're targeting, that is anti-Semitism. Yes. So it is disingenuous for Ms. Mittal or anyone else who is a proponent of BDS that includes these members of the, our own U.S. Congress to be saying that they're not anti-Semitic, but they support BDS. BDS is anti-Semitic. Right. And when, when BDS makes the comment about in the occupied Palestinian territories, their statement doesn't define what geographic area that means. Ah, uh, right. Does that mean those areas of the, of the West Bank that are Jewish communities and neighborhoods? Right. Does it mean all the West Bank? Which, by the way, this also means East Jerusalem, which includes the Old City, which includes the Dome of the Rock and the Western Wall and the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. That is what they consider to be the East Jerusalem. My view is, is that the occupied, that what the Palestinians mean by occupied Palestinian territory is all of Israel. Mm. Now, you could look to the UN because, as you might remember, in, in uh, December of 16, Yes. The UN Security Council passed Resolution 2334 that it was publicized as being a statement against Israeli, quote, settlements in the West Bank. But in fact, it was much more than that. And it includes a statement that I'm reading that said the establishment by Israel of settlements in the Palestinian territory occupied since 67 including East Jerusalem, has no legal validity. The UN Security Council defined Palestinian territory as being all of the West Bank and East Jerusalem. For those of you that have been to Israel, and for those of you that will go, and for those of you that study it, Israel preserves, Israel is the holy land. Mm. Although I have talked to many groups for many, many years, uh, when I, many times I will ask people who haven't been to the Middle East, where's Israel? They don't know. Well, then where's the Holy Land? They know. Mm. Israel is the Holy Land to the Muslims, the Jews, yeah. and the Christians. Yeah. And Israel preserves the Holy Land for all of us. Right of any religion, of any faith, you can go to Israel and go to any religious site in safety and security. That's right. They're not being destroyed. That's right. If you go to a Jewish religious site in a Palestinian controlled area, it doesn't exist anymore. Right. They were destroyed. That's right. In the article that I wrote that was published called the hypocrisy of Ben and Jerry's. I go through an analysis based upon my research of what's occurring in the Palestinian ruled areas. And one of them is not only is there no recognition of Jews and a defamation of Jews and a delegitimization of Jews and Jewish sites, it's also against Christians. Oh, right. And I would offer to you that if the land that we know of the Holy Land came under the control of Hamas, not only are the Jews in a, in a problem, but so are the Christians. Mm, wow. And this campaign of BDS to destroy Israel has to be stopped. Yes. Now, what is being done to stop it? And beginning about five years or so ago, there was a campaign in the United States to have states adopt legislation that became known as anti-BDS legislation and I had the fortune to be one of the leaders, one of, I, I worked with the Texas legislature and the author of the Texas bill as part of that, of, of the Texas adoption of its anti-BDS legislation. And today there are 33 states that have adopted some form of anti-BDS law, whether it be a statute or an executive order. 
I'm not going to go through the whole Texas statute with you, but I just want to remind you, I just want to reinforce there are two aspects of uh, anti-BDS laws and some states have adopted both and some have adopted one or the other. The two aspects that Texas adopted both are one, Texas, no Texas agency, governmental agency, all the way down to the school districts and city councils can enter into a contract with a company that, re, that will not sign a certification that they are not participating in a boycott of Israel. They can still boycott Israel. They can stand on the highest building and defame Israel and call for Israel to be destroyed and cease to exist. But this legislation says that if you're boycotting Israel, the state has no obligation to enter into a contract with you for your goods or services. Right. The second aspect of the BDS laws that have been adopted by some states and not by others, is that if you are boycotting Israel, then the state cannot, then the state funds, like the pension funds and retirement funds, cannot invest in you. Well, that's really public companies. Mm. So bringing it back to Ben and Jerry's, Ben and Jerry's statement said that its ice cream will not be sold in the occupied Palestinian territories, wherever that, but assume that means the West Bank. Right. Okay. Texas statute says it applies both to businesses and in the state of Israel and to territory controlled by Israel, which is, was intended to mean the West Bank and, quote, East Jerusalem, although East Jerusalem is part of Israel. Right. So Texas said, so Ben and Jerry says, we're not going to sell in the occupied territory. That violates the first prong of the Texas statute by saying we're not going to do business selling product. The second prong is it said we're not going to renew our license with the Israeli to sell Ben and Jerry's. Now they're refusing to do business with an Israeli. In my opinion, that violates the Texas statute. And Ben and Jerry's is violating it on a contractual basis. And potentially Unilever, who's the sole parent of, you know, of Ben and Jerry's, is by indirectly in violation because its subsidiary is, is violating it. So therefore, Ben and Jerry's is violating, I mean, Unilever is violating it. And Texas, if it can't buy Unilever stock. Uh, it's all very complicated at the Unilever level. Right, 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 right but clearly Ben and Jerry. So there's been opposition that has developed to the, to the, the statement that came out by Ben and Jerry's. <clears throat> and that opposition has developed by the states, mm -hmm. not all 33 states, but most of them, or, or many of them. Interestingly, the franchisees in the United States are complaining to Ben and Jerry's that you're you are tarnishing our brand and you're hurting our own business. That's right. That's right. Organizations have written letters to their states, including Texas. Mm -hmm. I wrote one and many organizations and individuals at my urging also did. Um, and essays have been written and there have been a lot of uh, organizations that have complained to Ben and Jerry's and to Unilever. Uh, interestingly, the people that and the organizations that support what Ben and Jerry's has done are complaining against those of us who are offended by the Ben and Jerry's statement, saying that those of us who are opposing Ben and Jerry's statement are suppressing their right of free speech when they support what Ben and Jerry's does. It's, it's an imbalance so that they can yeah. speak out in favor of what Ben and Jerry's does and and, and which has the implication for BDS. Right. But if I speak out against Ben and Jerry's and call for them to stop or for Texas to enforce its law, then I'm infringing on their free rights, free, right. free speech and their rights. I mean, it's a it's a convoluted argument. What's good for the it goose is. is good for the gander. It is. You know, we're running out of time and I want to have a few minutes at the end for Q&A. So let's I want to wrap up here with uh, just two more things. Uh, in about two minutes, if we can, 
you know, you once uh, made the comment to me in a, another conversation that this whole Israeli-Palestinian conflict is an industry. What does that mean? <clears throat> I learned uh, many years ago and having been studied this, there are organizations in, that are fueling the, the continuation of the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. How so? Because they are constantly defaming and criticizing Israel. Israel's violating the Palestinian rights. Israel is committing genocide. Israel is an apartheid state. There's never, from those types of organizations, any criticism of the Palestinians. Mm. Those organizations are prospering and can only prosper by the continuation of the conflict because if the conflict went away, what would be the reason for their existence? This is the only item on their agenda. There's an organization called J Street. Mm. J Street claims to be pro-Israel and pro-peace, but yet at every opportunity defames Israel, criticizes Israel. But to my knowledge, and I read and I get their emails, if ever, I don't know that they have, and maybe they have, and I just missed it by a chance, but they don't criticize the Palestinian terrorists, the, the suicide bombings, the stabbings, or any other terrorists, or even the manner in which the, the Palestinians treat their own people. Wow. So there's 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 these organizations, and they're also coming being funded by the EU that you can ask Miss Isaac about. Right. That are always very critical, and they keep fanning the the flames, right. rather than say to the Palestinians, "Why don't you sit down with the Israelis and end the conflict and bring peace for your people?" You know that Gaza could become a Singapore on steroids. If Hamas would want to take care of their people as much as they want to destroy Israel, because Gaza is on the Mediterranean, right next to the Suez Canal, connecting two major continents. But that's not Gaza. That's not the Hamas goal. So it's an industry because it, they keep fueling this conflict, which then they ask for money. Whenever you get an email from an organization, you scroll all the way to the bottom and there's always a button that says donate. Donate. Right. right really? Right. Yeah, Help yeah. us to bring peace and, and uh, the rights of the Palestinians donate. Yeah, well, I right. wonder how much there of that donate dollar goes to someone's salary. Right. So when I say that this is an industry, it's an industry. It's a business. These organizations exist for the sole purpose of keeping themselves alive and paying themselves their salaries because they're not doing anything to, to, to bring about peace. They're right. not bringing jobs or industry, or right. monies to the Palestinian areas to improve okay. them. They're just writing articles and speaking out. Right. Okay. Thank now, you I, I just want to mention. Yes. At this point, Ben and Jerry's has not retracted their statement. If I it, it, And Unilever has not disgorged Ben and Jerry's. Ben, Unilever said they're not a supporter of BDS, which maybe they believe, but it's disingenuous. Mm -hmm. because they own a company that is promoting BDS. Openly. And they, I guess, because of some corporate documentation, can't control what Ben & Jerry's does. The implications of what Ben & Jerry's does is that if it's not rescinded, other businesses are going to start have have pressure be put on them to do what Ben & Jerry's did. That's right. And BDS will start growing. Mm. And therefore, it is imperative and important that Ben and Jerry's statement and actions be rescinded. Yes. And harshly criticized, not only because it's the moral thing to do, but that so the other businesses, when Airbnb said they weren't going to do business with people in the West Bank, there was a you and cry and Airbnb rescinded their action. Right. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Charles. We have questions coming in. Um, and I know I want to ask you about a comment that you um, quote, I mean, a quote that you've um, said before from Rabbi uh, Sachs of Blessed Memory. 
And can you uh, please tell us about that quote? And then I want to go to the questions that are coming in the chat box. Well, let me, Rabbi Sachs was the, the uh, former chief rabbi of uh, England. Uh, he died last year, which for me personally, because I've read his books and I followed him was just very, very sad. Mm. Rabbi Sachs said a few things. Uh, one, he said that if you want to know what your enemy intends to do to you, look to see what they accuse you of doing to them. Uh, two, I want to read you something that was in a, in a book by Rabbi Sachs that I just read, and then we can go to Q of A. Okay. Uh, it says, he's talking about faith in God. He says, we have value in and of ourselves. We exist because of God's love. We survive because of his grace. Though we face the unknown, we are not alone. Faith is the space we create for God. Faith is not certainty. It is the courage to live with uncertainty. Mm. And I would suggest to you that's the time that we live in today. We live in a time of great uncertainty, both with the virus, with the political, with the economic. When you look around the world and there seems to be rioting and upheaval, there's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, Rabbi Sachs also, then I'll stop. He said optimism is the belief that things will get better. But hope is the belief that if we all work together, we will make it better. Mm. And that's what we have to do. We have to work together to make things better, mm. not just sit back and hope it gets better one day and leave it up to someone else to do it. So that concludes my comments. I appreciate y'all's attention. I hope I didn't, well, you hope did I didn't go on too long or spend too much no. time on the topic. There's a lot to talk about. I'd be happy yes. to come back one day and get in more into uh, topics, but there's always something happening in the Middle East. Thank you, Charles. So, I just want to applaud you uh, first because I, you are uh, so wise and your wisdom and your expertise in this particular topic is profound and I don't know that we've had a speaker who could encapsulate so much information in such an order to help us understand what's going on locally in Israel but the implications worldwide for the Jewish people and then um, ending with the information and the quote from Rabbi Sachs was just the icing on the cake so thank you for sharing that uh, with you. us. Yes, we do have some questions briefly. Let me go into the chat box and see. Uh, David, thank you for your question. His question is, have you contacted HEB supermarkets and maybe supermarkets in general about the selling of Ben & Jerry products? And the second question is too, is what about legal action if Ben & Jerry's is intimidated by others? Imitated. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, imitate. So uh, it, I have mixed feelings about going into a business, a retail business, and suggesting that they not buy, a, not no longer sell a product. I don't really, I, I can see the positive. I have a concern about it, me telling them how to conduct their business. So my, my preference is I just don't buy that product. And I encourage other people not to. And if it sits on, I've even said to my wife, I'm going to go in and buy all the Ben and Jerry's at, a, at our local grocery station off of the counter. And then I'm going to pay for it. And I'm going to give it back to them and say, I just paid for it. But Ben and Jerry's is a big of the country company and you shouldn't sell it. So throw it away and tell them what I'm doing. And let them know that I'm not buying the product. It's not them. It's not the not the HEB, for example, that I'm, that I have a problem with. HEB is not involved in this. Right. They're just trying to, you know, sell what the public wants. So that was my answer. Just don't okay. buy. Them. And there are supermarkets around the United States and elsewhere in the world that have actually taken the action of saying we're not buying any more Ben and Jerry products. Yes. The second I one about. What legal action of Ben and Jerry's is imitated by others? Yes. Look, uh, if a company 
uh, the, I don't, I'm not aware. Well, there may be a violation of a federal law if a company uh, engages in, in a boycott, but generally that's pretty hard to sustain. Because uh, a company can say, I'm not gonna sell the, the, the into any area. There's no law that prohibits a company from saying you can't not sell in an area. That's up to the company to decide. Question is, do you have an obligation to do business with that company, which are like wow. those anti-BDS laws? Um, I think that there's public pressure that, that can be applied. The, uh, but it is not a violation. It's not a criminal act. If a company says, I'm not going to do business with Israel, right. unless it's engaged on a statewide level. Now, I will mention that the Human Rights Council, Council of the UN has published a list of companies that they claim are uh, particip participating in the, in the occupation and Israel's occupation of the, um, of the uh, occupied Palestinian territory. And are encouraging governments uh, not to do business with those companies. That, and yes. there may be some action there. Right, right. Okay, thank you for that question, David. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments? Please just wave at me so I can tell and then please unmute yourself. Let's see. All right. I don't see any questions or comments. Um, we are going to send the link to Charles's article that he wrote for the Texas Jewish Post out in this email. And we are also going to send a link to uh, the headline that he mentioned earlier from our, uh, the Congress people who they call themselves the squad who are ramping up support for the BDS movement. Uh, Rashida Tlaib, AOC, and the others that um, Charles mentioned earlier in today's presentation. I will send you guys the link to that as well. Um, so please, guys, um, as you just heard Charles say, you know, to influence the public to not buy Ben and Jerry's, um, you know, go to your peers, go to your friends and family, and explain what's going on, share this video to educate the public of what is going on and the implications. If Ben and Jerry's can be successful with this, like Charles said, other businesses are going to be pressured to join in lockstep, and that is not good. Can I make a comment to, to David's question? Yes. These, these are public companies. What can be done is as a shareholder, hmm. getting involved in shareholder meetings, because what the Palestinian proponents are doing is trying to get resolutions adopted at shareholder meetings mm. of public companies to engage in BDS. And if you don't have to own a whole lot of stock in order to have a voice at a shareholders meeting and to oppose it, it's the same thing that, that's happening on campuses where Students for Justice in Palestine uh, are uh, active and they are part of BDS and they're part of uh, right. defaming not only Israel, but intimidating the Jewish students and the pro-Israel advocates, That's right. even the Christians uh, also. That's right. And they are trying to get resolutions passed to, to boycott Israel and the pro-Israel activists on campuses, the students are getting more engaged to oppose it. That's and right. in many cases defeating it, but SJP is making progress on campuses because people are not fully knowledgeable that's right what the facts are that's right yes and that was david's follow-up question just now about campuses you know what can be done in regards to that and just my own two cents is that that is a problem and you just touched on that charles about campuses it's a hotbed for propaganda and they're doing a great job at it and we have got to have campuses push back uh, organizations that are pushing back and i know there are i know stand with us i think you charles work with stand with us in some capacity maybe you're on their boards for your region but um they are pretty active on campuses am i right 
Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's a never ending battle, but that's what you have to do. We have to continue to push back and edu so share this video with if you know someone about to go off to college or someone who's in college, you may who un undoubtedly is in, being encountered with the propaganda on campus. Um, share this with them, educate them because they don't know the truth. And that is the next um, that is the, the target we need to be targeting is the, the college age kids in high school. Uh, I know the intimidation is strong. But you know what? That doesn't matter. Push back. It takes one leader to step out. There are organizations that will support these young people. I, I know the intimidation is strong there. Charles, what would you say to that? Because David is right. There is intimidation against these college kids who do speak against BDS and the propaganda on campuses. Look, it, it's, it takes a special type of person to lead with their chin to step out and take a risk that you're gonna have arrows shot at you. I was in St. Louis in 2017, speaking throughout a, a weekend about BDS. And on Monday morning, an organization called uh, Jewish Voice for Peace, which I've come to learn that if, if a word like peace is in your title, be careful because it probably doesn't mean what they what you would like it to mean. Right. Jewish Voice for Peace is an organization who's who has adopted a policy again calling for the dismantling of Israel. They are anti-Zionists, which by the way, Zionism is strictly a movement for the self-determination of the Jewish people and their ancestral homeland. So it <clears> takes <throat> so. Monday morning, JVP posted on their webpage nationally, Facebook nationally, a post calling me out by name as an attorney and calling me a racist for defending the racist state of Israel. The uh, BDS proponents, the anti-Israel activists, are very loud. They are uh, not hesitant of engaging in intimidating tactics uh, or discussing the issues. And most people just want to go about their lives. Mm. They're not, most people are not confrontational uh, and they shy away from it. If you're in college, you just wanna get an education and then you know, get a job and get on with your life. It's not to go and confront the SGP, which I think are being supported outside of the campuses and organized, someone's paying for all this. That's right. It doesn't happen that when I, uh, it's some money's coming from somewhere. That's right. Uh, the, the Palestinians have a very simple uh, statement, which is this was our land and the Jews took it. Yeah. It's not so hard to understand it if you don't know the history. That's right. That's um, right. I mean, the Palestinians, I, I, you know, when, when my wife and I went to the mosque and we heard the founder of SJP speak, he said the Palestinians were descendants of the Canaanites. Um, that was uh, quite a revelation to me. Um, so, well, the misinformation is just out there. And, and like, I think it points back to what you said is educating these young people. So if they're intimidated to speak, to go out and speak uh, against the propaganda on campus, share the digital content, share the digital content with these we people. Just, look, we just have to keep working on it. And it's not just Jews. It's the Christians, too, because That's right. someone asked me once on a program I was on, is, is uh, Hamas a problem only for Israel? No. Right. Hamas is part of the Muslim Brotherhood, whose goal is to spread Sharia law throughout the world. Right. And they are in uh, affiliated with Iran. Right. Right. Hamas is only the visible uh, puppet. Right. And as we speak here today, um, Afghanistan has fallen into the hands of the Taliban and they are declaring it an Islamic state and um, they're making progress. So um, this could not be any more timely, Charles. Thank you for your question, David. I don't see any other questions. We're out of time. 
Uh, please Thank share this video. Yes, it was an honor to have you, Charles, and Janine as well. Thank you for both from both Ann and Mike and myself and just among friends as we work and we continue to work together, as you say, to cultivate hearts to uh, support the land of Israel and the Jewish people. We will not back down. We will not stop. We'll continue to educate the public. Everyone says thank you in the chat box, Charles. Thank you, everybody. Have a good thank day. Thank you. Bye-bye. We've enjoyed having you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for coming.